If you're a fan of high-tier jet gameplay, the Soviet tree is a must-have for a multitude of reasons, but one of my favorite things about the tree is its large variety of unique and interesting air-to-air -air missiles. This video will cover all of them. I'm going to make comparisons with Sidewinders pretty frequently, so if you're not familiar with those, it might be worth watching the Sidewinder video before this one. I'm going to go over the smaller missiles first, then move on to the large ones. We start with R3S, which shows up at 9.0 on the MiG-17AS and is used by the MiG-19PT and early MiG-21s. It's also found on Chinese jets under the name PL-2. In the AIM-9 video, I said that the Soviets were the only tree without a plane that carries AIM-9B. What I meant by that is that they're the only tree without an actual name brand AIM-9B. The R-3S is reverse engineered from the AIM-9B, so of course they are very similar, but they're not the same missile and that is reflected in War Thunder. There are small differences here and there, but the most noticeable difference is the worst seeker on the R-3S, which is less sensitive, which means you're going to have to get even closer to get a lock from certain angles. But apart from that, it's similar enough to the AIM-9B that they function more or less the same. It's got short range, bad maneuverability, and bad flare resistance, really only effective against targets that aren't paying attention, don't have flares, or are at very high altitude. Another variant of the R3 is the R3R, a radar homing variant found exclusively on MiG-21s. It has the same motor and fins as the R3S, so that means the range and maneuverability limitations still apply here. However, the IR Seeker has been swapped out for an early SAR Seeker. Granted, it's a pretty terrible SAR Seeker, often struggling to lock targets even if the radar lock is good, and it gets trashed by a single cloud of chaff, but it does work from any aspect compared to the IR Seeker on the R3S, which is rear aspect only. Thankfully, the R3R Seeker is uncaged up to 30 degrees of lock angle, which means you can lead the missile quite a bit before firing. Properly leading any missile is important, but it's absolutely vital with the R3R to give it the best chance of hitting, since it can't make a big turn off the rail to get on course to hit, and any turning it does do bleeds its already low amount of energy. Take this shot for example. I lead as much as I need to, and the missile doesn't really have to turn. Up at higher altitude, the seeker works better due to a lack of interference from ground clutter. The thinner air means less drag on the missile and therefore better range, and my target not only doesn't have chaff, but doesn't maneuver either. That's a best case scenario, but if your target takes advantage of any one of this missile's multitude of weaknesses, it isn't going to connect. Still a fun missile to use, especially around 9.3 to 10.3. I take two on the MiG-21S and one on the MF and SMT, but I don't take any on the BIS because I find them to be too uncompetitive at that VR. Next up is the R-13 series, a few more reverse engineered sidewinders. R-13M used to be found on several planes, but has since been removed from everything that used to carry it and swapped out with R-13M1. So R-13M currently sits unused in the files. It looks like an AIM-9D, but performance-wise in War Thunder, it's most comparable to an AIM-9E. They both have high thrust, short burn time motors, although R-13's motor is over 40% more powerful than AIM-9E's motor. The two missiles have almost identical seekers, but the R-13M can pull 15G compared to 9E's 10G. It's a shame nothing uses this missile, and I hope we get to see it return to the game at some point. The improved R-13M is the R-13M1, which very obviously took some uh, inspiration from the AIM-9J. You can find it on a few MiG-21s, most MiG-23s and both MiG-27s. All of these planes can also carry R-60s, so I'll talk about R-13 versus R-60 later on. Like the 9E to 9J progression, 13M to 13M1's big upgrade is the new fins, which improve responsiveness and bump maneuverability up to 20G, but the motor and seeker remain unchanged. Effectively, you can think of the R13M1 as an AIM-9J with better range, but no radar slaving. Now we get into the truly unique stuff, starting with R60. You start seeing R60 at 9.3 on the Yak-38 and Yak-38M, and it becomes pretty common around 10.0 to 10.7. R60 is a classic dogfight missile. It's very small and light, weighing about half as much as a Sidewinder. This low weight offsets the low thrust from the motor, although the missile doesn't carry much momentum and pretty much comes to a stop as soon as the motor burns out. Small size also comes at the cost of a small warhead. However, maneuverability is very good at 30G. So naturally, with the R60, you'll want to look for shots at closer ranges where the missile doesn't have to glide very much, if at all, after the motor burns out. And if your enemy is aware of you and has flares, it's not even worth firing since the R60 is an easy one flare. R60M is an improved R60 which adds a new all-aspect seeker. It's found at 10.0 on the Su-25, but is common at 11.0 all the way to top tier. On export jets, you'll find it under the name R60MK. In real life, R60MK had a different fuse, but in War Thunder, the R60M and R60MK are completely identical. Being all aspect, R60M can now lock onto planes from the front, but the new Seeker also has more gimbal limit on the rails and actually has better flare resistance on account of its increased plane sensitivity and decreased flare sensitivity. 
it's still usually an easy one flare, but every now and then they will get through flares rear aspect, which is something to watch out for. Overall, it's not as impressive as other missiles at top tier, but it's still usable. My favorite way to use this missile at top tier is to launch it in extremely close range and slam it into the forehead of the guy I'm jousting. On the Su-25 at 10.0, however, this missile is absolutely busted and can grief flareless subsonic jets. As for R-13 versus R-60, everything that can carry R-13 has the option of carrying R-60 on the same pylon, so you have the choice between which one you want to take. You can never take more than one R-13 on a pylon, but often the R-60 comes with the option of being mounted on a double launcher. In these cases, I'm taking two R-60s over one R-13M1 any day of the week. The only planes I use R-13M1 on are the MiG-21 BIS and MiG-21 SPSK. On the MiG-21 BIS, I like having two R-13s on my inner pylon since those can only take one R-60M anyway, and I like having the slightly better reach of the R-13M1. On the SPSK, there are no double launchers, so I actually like taking one R60 and one R13M1, and that loadout has been working pretty well for me. But if you have a plane that has access to both missiles, I do encourage you to try both of them and see what loadout works best for you. At last, we have the R73, which made its introduction to the game very recently on the Su-25BM. R73 is like an R60 on steroids. It takes the dogfight missile concept and turns it up to 11. The motor burn time is bumped up to 5.5 seconds, putting its range about on par with that of the AIM-9L, but the real star of the show here is the 40G maneuvering combined with thrust vectoring which allows the missile to pull some absolutely unreal maneuvers. Combine that with the best seeker on any short range IR missile and you have the complete package. The Python 3 still has the R73 beat in acceleration and range, but in just about every other metric the R73 is best in class. In War Thunder, this missile has a long and controversial history that magically turns any comment section into a toxic wasteland, so I'm gonna save that story for another time, but we will start seeing the R-73 on fighters probably by the end of the year, and this thing is going to be an absolute menace when paired with an HMD on a competent platform. For now, just watch out for the rear aspect flare resistance if you go up against the Su-25BM, and you should be fine. That's all of the little short-range missiles, now we get into the big missiles. These come with the option of either a radar or an IR seeker. If the name ends in R, it's radar guided, and if it ends in T, it's IR guided. Of course, both guidance types have their pros and cons, it's up to you which type of missile you want to use. Also, I want to point out that the R and T variants might share the same motor, but the pointy radar seeker is more aerodynamic than the blunt IR seeker, so the IR variants have more drag and therefore slightly less range than their radar homing counterparts, but it's not a huge factor. We start with R-23, used by the MiG-23M and MiG-23MF. This missile has a very powerful rocket motor that has a very short burn time at less than 2 seconds, so in terms of flight performance it's comparable to something like an AIM-7D. The R-23R takes 2.5 seconds to even start pulling, and it doesn't reach full maneuverability until 5 seconds after launch. Couple that with the MiG-23M's garbage radar that doesn't have an ACM mode, and you have a very underwhelming combination. On the other hand, R-23T starts tracking much sooner off the rail at 0.5 seconds, reaching full maneuverability at 2.5 seconds after launch. Like all of these big IR-guided missiles, the R-23T has a very good all-aspect seeker. The advantage of these big IR missiles is stealth. They can glide pretty far, especially if you fire them from high altitude, and between the short burn time and lack of an RWR warning for your enemy, the element of surprise is really the biggest strength of these missiles. So overall, the 23T sort of just works, while the 23R is a pain in the ass to use on the MiG-23M. I think the 23T is definitely the better missile overall, and if you get a down tier, this thing slams flareless planes incredibly hard. R24 is a direct upgrade from the R23 that brings some very nice improvements, and you'll find it on the MiG-23ML series of planes. Thrust is a little bit lower, but it burns for longer, giving it better range than the R23. Maneuverability goes up to 24G, and the guidance delay is slashed considerably, making the R24 a lot better at closer ranges. So flight performance wise, the R24 is closer to something like an AIM-7E2 or SB-Day. R24R also gains inertial guidance, which helps the missile stay on course if there's a low quality radar lock. R24R itself is an excellent missile, and the MiG-23 ML series of planes have a better radar that adds a much needed ACM mode. R-24R is still one of my favorite missiles in the game, nearly two years after it was added. On the other hand, everything that makes the R-23T good is now even better on the R-24T. It's got more range and a more sensitive seeker, and anyone who has played top tier can probably relate to the experience of unexpectedly blowing up and saying where when looking for the MiG-23 that did you in. 
If you're going up against MiG-23s, it might be a good idea to randomly flare every now and then just in case. Both versions of the R-24 are really fantastic missiles, and you can't go wrong with either one, so which one you pick is a matter of preference, but most people tend to prefer the R-24T. Personally, the 24R is one of my favorite missiles in the game, and I have a lot of fun using them. On the MiG-23ML, you have to pick two of either type since you can't mix them, but on the MLA and MLD, you can mix them and take one of each if you want, so that's what I do on those planes. Continuing the series, we have R-27. You can find these on the MiG-29s and Yak-141. On the German MiG-29, they're called R-27R1 and R-27T1, again, just export names. Compared to R-24, the R-27's motor has less thrust, but burns longer, however, the R-24's actually have better range than the R-27's, which is a certified bra moment. But the R-27's do pull harder at 30G, and they pull very quick off the rail, they're some of the most maneuverable big missiles, and they are surprisingly good at closer ranges. The R-27R has been made obsolete by the R-27ER on the MiG-29's, so it only ever sees use while you're grinding the ER, or on the Yak-141 which can only carry ERs on its inner pylons, leaving the outer pylons free for an R-27R. 27R has inertial guidance like the 24R, but it is also one of the only missiles that has data link. Most radar missiles can only lose lock for about 5 seconds before they explode, and if they do regain lock, they might not be able to resume tracking the target. But with Datalink, the R27R can glide without a lock for up to 60 seconds, and usually has no problem reacquiring lock. Really the speed is this missile's biggest weakness, especially when compared to something like an AIM-7M or Super 530D, but everything else about it is on par with or better than other top tier SAR missiles. R-27T also has really fancy guidance, in fact it has the best IR seeker found on any missile carried by a plane. It's got really high sensitivity to planes, and more importantly once you fire it, the field of view clamps down making it one of the most flare resistant missiles you'll come across. You can carry it on the MiG-29 if you want, but it's not really worth taking over the ER, so the 27T only really sees use on the Yak-141's outer pylons. So it has worse range than the R-24T, but it has better flare resistance. And finally we have the R-27ER on the Soviet MiG-29 and Yak-141, also called R-27ER-1 on the German MiG-29. The R-27E missiles have a new motor which more than addresses the range issue the base 27 has. This new motor produces an absolutely unreal amount of thrust, making the R-27ER comically fast. It absolutely smokes every other missile in the game and is just in its own league when it comes to how quickly it gets down range. That gets added on top of the R-27R's features, which means it still has the quick time to maneuver, although it can't turn as sharp as the 27R on account of how much faster it is. You can actually launch these things while pointing your nose up, immediately unlock after firing, let them fly up into low earth orbit, and then relock as soon as they get closer to the target and the data link will bring them back down. It's sort of DIY lofting. They're also extremely potent from weird angles, like in this case this target is flying in an awkward direction and using a bunch of chaff and the ER just does not care in the slightest. The ER is so unbelievably good that the only thing keeping this missile in check is the fact that no plane can carry more than two of them. It's without a doubt the best radar missile in the game, and I'd go so far as to say it's the best missile in the game, period. If you want to just jump into some lobbies and get some easy kills, this is the missile to do it with. It's possible to evade the ER with a well-timed high-G roll, but this is tricky to pull off, and the best way to evade it is the same as any other SAR missile, just hug the ground and it won't hit. Also in the files, fully modeled and ready to go when Gaijin decides to use it, is the R-27ET, same high-powered rocket motor as the ER, but with the same IR seeker as the R-27T. Apparently this configuration is historical, and in real life the improved seeker with the better IR CCM was refitted onto existing 27T and ET missiles later on. It might be a while until we see this missile get used on anything, obviously being able to engage at that kind of range without setting off the target's RWR is going to be very interesting. Other honorable mentions of stuff in the files, there is a visual model for the R-73L, apparently an R-73 with a laser fuse, but this missile has no stats and it's just a visual model right now. Also, Yak-141 has a few unused weapon presets with R-77 in their name. That's the only reference to the R-77 so far. There's no model or stats for the missile, and the weapon preset just contains R-60Ms. Don't look into it too much, as there are a bunch of unused weapon presets on hundreds of planes, but Gaijin has said they want to enable active radar homing missiles for as many nations as possible at the same time. So when the R-77 does come, this could be a hint that it shows up on the Yak-141 first, but again, it could mean absolutely nothing. 
Those are all of the Soviet missiles we have in the game in any capacity, but of course there are a lot more we don't have yet, like R-98, R-40, R-33, R-14, just to name a few. Personally, I am really looking forward to R-33S. If you enjoy these videos, consider leaving a like, it really helps me out and lets me know that these videos are worth the effort to make. Come hang out on Discord, and thanks for watching.